So let's focus on this, how much we're spending as a country on healthcare and what we're getting for it, because we're spending more than just about anybody else in the world for a developing economy. And what do we have to show for our money? Well, we're spending more than only three other economies in the world, China, Japan, and Germany. We're spending more than the entire GDP of France or Britain. Uh, and we're actually underperforming on every measure you look at. Uh, we're underperforming, whether it's uh, infant mortality, longevity, uh, it's even treatment for heart disease and other things. We're not doing very well. And we have a system that is rife with waste, uh, inefficiently delivered services, unnecessary services, and high prices. And it really needs to be reformed. One of, I think, the tragedies is, uh, I think there's bipartisan agreement that we need to bring health care costs down. Uh, and yet the Republican bill does nothing of the sort. And what I tried to do in the book is to go to places that are actually doing a great job and finding out what we can learn from those places that are knocking it out of the park. And those are the 12 transformational practices. And you have 12, and unfortunately, we're not going to have time to go through all 12. <laughs> but but right. give us an overview of the basic factors in this that could really be changed that would give us better value for our money. So let me highlight two. Uh, the first one is it really starts at scheduling. How do you schedule an appointment? Most doctors start, let's say, Monday morning, and they have a full list of patients. Places that have transformed themselves, the doctors start the day, and half the patient uh, appointment slots are empty. They're for people who walk in, people who find that they have time and need the annual exam or need a, a preventative service like a pap smear. Uh, and that is, works much, much better, because people who have a problem today are seen today and not seen three or four weeks or five weeks from now when the problem could have gotten worse uh, and other things could have intervened. The second thing, and this is, I think, very important for people to understand, you know, 84 cents of every dollar in the healthcare system goes to people with chronic illness, like my patients with cancer or patients with heart disease or Parkinson's or diabetes. Um, so if you want to actually reduce costs, you have to focus on that 84 cents and people with chronic illness.